Hey guys, hope everybody is having a fantastic uh, week so far. I know I am having a great one. I'm incredibly excited uh, this week. If you haven't heard, tomorrow is a very big day at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Uh, we're going to be celebrating uh, the naming of the College of Business tomorrow. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Gary W. Rollins, uh, who is the CEO of Rollins, Inc. He's also the vice chairman of the board. Um, you might know Rollins, Inc. By, uh, a little bit better uh, by their number one holding uh, that they have. Uh, the pest control company, Orkin, um, is their number one holding. Uh, but uh, Mr. Rollins and his wife, Kathleen, have generously donated... $40 million to the UTC College of Business. Um, that is the second largest gift in the history of the Tennessee Board of Regents. Um, it's the largest cash gift. Um, you know, usually gifts like this uh, have a lot of strings attached and you don't get all the money until somebody passes away or their estate is all bequeathed. Um, Mr. Rollins is writing this $40 million in the form of uh, $8 million checks within five years. Um, so uh, it's a pretty special day. So if you happen to see this before 1.30 p.m. on Thursday, um, feel free to come to Fletcher Hall out back. We're going to be celebrating uh, Mr. Rollins, his wonderful wife, Kathleen, and um, the great things that this means in the life of our university. Um, and most especially the life of the UTC College of Business that will now be known as the Gary W. Rollins College of Business. I'm incredibly excited about it, and I hope you are too. Go Mox! So today we will uh, be talking a little bit about Nicely Said and about Jab Jab. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on them, um, and uh, we're going to do that in the form of a, an assignment. Uh, but uh, to be candid with you, I'd like to hold off in uh, telling you a little bit more about that assignment tonight um, uh, until uh, about another day or so. You'll see it in the announcements, just simply because I don't want to take your focus away uh, from your HubSpot test. So before you get too much into um, looking at Jab Jab and looking at uh, Nicely Said uh, this evening, I do want to talk really quickly about HubSpot. Um, if you have any questions prior to taking your test, please let me know. Okay, I need all tests taken in the timeline uh, that I provided for you, uh, which is tomorrow, unless we have made special arrangements otherwise. Um, and so here's what I want you to do. At the beginning of your test, and the time, and I have your time frame written down, I need you to take a screenshot of your computer, um, or you can take a picture of some. I need to know when you started the test with a time and date attached to it. So that's easily done on uh, just taking a screenshot of your computer. So, for example, you can see mine in the top right now where it says 9.56 p.m. I'd really like it to have a date, but if it's not, the, the time is perfectly fine. Uh, at the start, and at the finish, okay? That's important too. So when you finish your test, I simply need you to take a screenshot of your score with the timestamp on it as well, just so I can see when you started, when you finished, and then obviously I need to make sure that I see your score. Okay, once again, the way that I am grading this is if you get a, a passing grade, which is 75% or above, you get full credit for that. Do not panic if you get below a 75. That's simply your percentage grade out of 100. But once again, if you get below a 75, what I'm allowing you to do is to retake the quiz. And then after you've completed, you know, and uh, after you've completed that one, if you get below, excuse me, above a 75, uh, that second time, what I'll do is I will average your score with your previous score and so that will uh, that will raise your grade up in that way. Hopefully that helps uh, the folks out who, who might not have done as well as they wanted to the first time. Hopefully that's fairly straightforward enough guys. If you have any questions once again please feel free to email them to me um, and I'll get back with you as soon as humanly possible. 
Awesome. So let's talk really quick about uh, about Nicely Said. Um, I absolutely love this book, by the way. This is one of my uh, first books that I always recommend anyone who is considering at all going into um, the digital marketing industry, even if they are on the design side of things. I think what's so great about Nicely Said is that it talks about writing as a form of design and not simply as putting words down on paper. I think it's uh, through even a lot of times, unfortunately, in college, we become accustomed to simply writing an effective five-paragraph essay. We don't really think about writing as a form of design. Um, and so I think that uh, Nicely Said is a great way to write in terms of thinking of it, of how does it actually fit the page? How does it fit the narrative? How does it fit the audience that you're writing it to? Um, like I said, I'm a uh, I'm a big fan of um, of this uh, of, of this book. Kate Kiefer Lee and Nicole Fenton are absolutely outstanding people, and um, they're outstanding talents as well. So the things that I hope you've gotten so far, um, you'll see on your screen right now, um, and we'll scroll down here a little bit more. This is a little bit more than what you've read so far, but um, uh, it's it's some of the notes that that I want to make sure that you keep. Um, obviously we want your writing when it comes to web copy to be um, as clear as possible and as simple as possible. Um, because of that, uh, of the abbreviated attention span that we have for people, um, simplicity is incredibly important, right? So avoiding abbreviations when at all possible uh, is a good thing, particularly when we talk about website copy and mission statements. Um, we're writing for clarity, guys. We need to ensure that everyone understands us, make sure that they know, um, you know, what we're trying to say. That helps when we utilize simple sentences as well. Um, run on sentences, guys, we just simply don't have their attention for that long. Um, so, you know, simplicity is, is, you know, sadly, oftentimes, more difficult than uh, than writing a long sentence. It's very easy to to drone on and on uh, when we either make a social media post or, or write for for web copy. Honesty is incredibly important. That goes uh, right along with what uh, the authors say about tone and voice. But ensuring that we stay true to what uh, that company narrative is. Right, staying true to the company voice um, while remaining honest, right? Consideration is incredibly important. Um, being inclusive uh, and polite, I believe, uh, are some of the, the most important points that they make. Um, you know, when we use slang in real life and everything, and, and guys, I'm, I'm one of the chief offenders of this in, you know, real, you know, everyday life, to where I'm sarcastic and use slang and things like that. You know, when we do that online, uh, our tone isn't always conveyed properly. And so erring on the side of politeness, erring on the side of inclusivity, because we don't know what audiences are going to, excuse me, um, come across our content um, is, is incredibly important. Uh, they also, these audiences might not understand the slang that we're, uh, using and so ensure that you're you're speaking in a clear and accurate way. You know that being said, we don't want to sound like a robot. Um, one of the previous uh, faults that websites would have was they would try to write by keyword stuffing. Right, we would do an analysis of what we thought that search engines um, wanted to. Um, you know, wanted, wanted to read, wanted to see, um, you know, but the reality is, is that what people want to see is copy that makes sense to them, copy that sounds the way that we talk. So there's a delicate balance to walk right there where we're wanting to be polite, avoiding slang, but certainly ensuring that, uh, that, copy is not formulaic, not robotic, and that it's natural, right? And certainly some key points are to 
check your worth work for proofreading errors for stylistic errors um, I think it's very important to follow their advice of ensuring that the person who's uh, you're getting that feedback from is not a family member certainly not a spouse um, and uh, somebody who you would feel confident that they would give you their honest uh, and straightforward opinion. Okay, so as we start to talk about audiences, ensure that you're knowing who that message is for, right? Who's your intended audience? How do they speak? Uh, what groups do you imagine would see it? Because, you know, certainly as we've been talking about, um, about checking work and asking for feedback, things like that, um, we want to ensure that the, the proper people will will know this. Uh, well, you know, we, we know who's going to see this. So the point of that is, you know, why do we want that? We understand start to understand what their priorities are, right? We understand how they speak. They will understand more who is doing the speaking, what presentation style it's coming from what perspective they have and what their lifestyle is. You want to make sure that you have in context how those people are using that content both now and in uh, and in the future, right? So as we start talking about the messaging of it, we need to understand what that message is that you're actually trying to convey and what the tr reader really tries to understand. We need to understand that the content um, is there to serve not only the company's goals, but to identify what the goals are for the consumer for that content, understand what the purpose of that content is, and how we can serve the consumer with it. Obviously, you need to identify what type of content that is, and understand where in the marketing cycle that reader is going to see that. We want to make sure we know what we expect the people to do next following that content, right? We want to ensure that, you know, if, if this content is a standalone piece of content, such as, uh, you know, a landing page, that, you know, we funnel them to the proper action, right? A click here now uh, type of thing. If there is a range of choices that they have after that, we need to consider what that larger flow is, right? We need to ensure that proper linking, proper uh, that proper structure is, is, is placed in for that. Obviously, if we're working towards a particular metric in, in all of this, we need to identify what the return on investment is so that we can write the content accordingly, right? At times, it might be important to get your legal team to uh, read over this. Perhaps it's even a CPA, uh, potentially, uh, or at least the, uh, the someone with experience at, at your company or in the industry, simply because there might be some legal and privacy concerns with this. Right, if it's a website, we need to understand if we're uh, building it from the ground up, how we're designing that, what problems your website's trying to solve, because if you try to solve every problem from customer service to e-commerce, things like that, that's a very challenging thing to do. Right, so understand what your website is actually trying to accomplish, what type of tone that website has, so how does it behave, whether this is a new fe feature in this, you know, or if it is a new feature, understand, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we, we aren't being repetitive when we do stuff like that. If it is a new feature, uh, something that you'll be uh, repeating something similar for in the, in the future, Make sure that you do that in a unique way so that we're not boring our consumer with our website. Um, but it's also in a way that uh, will maintain a level of flow. Right? I think if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And if you can't manage it, you can't scale it. And so what that means is it's important to have proper goals. So identify what success looks like for the website. Is it a certain amount of traffic? Is it making a certain amount of sales uh, through an e-commerce platform? Is it solving uh, some customer service issues in this way so that it can take some pressure off of traditional marketing sources for them? Right, so when you're talking about your entire team, understand 
what the writing process and the writing flow looks like, right? Who needs to sign off on this project? Is it the designer? Is it the CEO of the company? Make sure that you know who's supposed to be proofreading this, who's supposed to be approving all of the content, the copy, things like that. Making sure that everyone understands their role um, so that we're not having too many people who are uh, trying to control the uh, entire direction of the piece. That if you're a if you're someone who's providing <clears throat> copy edits, that you're not providing subject matter edits to this. Okay, making sure as well that if this content needs to be published somewhere else, if it needs to <clears throat> end up in um, the hands of, uh, you know, a, a public relations team, then that happens as well. Important to keep in, time, in line with deadlines, when those approvals need to be happen, if there's a translation that needs to be made on whether it's website or entire copy, that uh, your writing is clear enough for the translator to understand um, understand when that is, uh, you know, that, that, that the translation is accurate and when everything should be posted. Right, and then keeping a uh, keeping a knowledge of the format as well <clears throat> all right guys I'm gonna push pause right now we're gonna go into nicely or excuse me into jab jab in just a second I'm gonna grab a drink of water really quick and I'll be back with you in a second video <clears throat> 